Good afternoon everyone. Today's project is a bit more of a solar or off-grid type update. Um, basically, completely didn't record anything about putting up this turbine, but here it is. And this is, well, useless. Absolutely useless. So, this used to sit on that pole. It used to sit up in that clearing up there, up, up in the sky. And yeah, fair enough, it span really well in the wind. But how much power do you think it produced? Uh, it's probably about 10 watts. Strong wind, absolutely going mad, spinning like hell. And it made 10 watts. And I tried on a 12 watt battery, which it loaded up a bit more, and it made about 18 watts. And then the blades start stalling down in speed, even in strong wind. So this has been cut down today, cut all the boss off and everything. That I can go back to the land of scrap where it came from. It is a, what was it supposed to be? 400 watt, 18, where is it? 13 meters a second. So we were doing about 14 and a half meters a second when I measured it. It was going like mad and barely making any power. Obviously the power comes out in th three phase from the permanent magnet DC motor through this box with not a lot going on inside through a piece of cable which run on 4mm copper that's quite oven cable all the way from up there and down the pole so yeah that was a complete waste of time I checked the wiring I've tried it again on the bench having it wired up direct I take the blades off spin it with the drill useless don't buy one of these I don't know, it doesn't have a brand or anything, HG, whatever the hell it is, doesn't matter. Yeah, looks good, spins, doesn't make power. In the meantime, the uh, Kia Sierras are out. So these old panels from 2001, 120 watts piece, we're doing fine with my old battery setup. But now we've had to, uh, I've gone for four of these. I think they're 235 watt SunTech panels. Ah, they're a fair bit bigger than the old uh, Kia Sierra ones. And what are we? Mid late September, was it 19th? So we're not getting strong sun, and they're pulling about 790 to 800 watts in good weather. So the way these are wired up at the moment, due to the uh, voltage limit on my charge controller, is 105 watts I think, 105 volts sorry so putting all these together I can't remember it was way over 105, it's close to 170 volts so what I decided to do, because the charge control limit on 24 volt is I think it's 960 watts input so we run two panels in series well four panels in, two panels in series and then the the panels are paralleled up to keep the voltage down but stay within the wattage rating so yeah they've been working quite well it's just a shame the sun's gone in now we've got a nice cloudy day and yeah so spend a bit of time cutting down the old pole As you see up here it took a lot of effort to do this because this scaffold pole i actually had to hammer this section into the ground here and stuff a pole up the inside and then stuff the pole on top and then it was welded to that as you see we've got a clear open field so when the wind was coming towards us in this direction we were getting a very good clean wind but it, well the i don't know if i'm going to be able to send it back they're going to argue the toss with me about why it didn't work saying i didn't wire it up properly and everything but it was wired up properly did actually have the four channel scope on it to make sure i was getting three phase output which it was and it was just not good enough so i'm wondering that's that portion there is the only bit that's the actual motor the rest of this is just an empty cone what do you think do we take it apart have a look at the magnets maybe we could three pretty put new rotor with bigger magnets and maybe rewind the coil i don't know Either way, so what we could do, yeah, as I said, rewind it because when it's running at high speed, it was 
I don't know, it's maybe pushing about 30, 40 volts. That was through that that speed wind controller, which obviously until it reaches 24 volts, it can't actually put any power into the batteries. It has no boost converter to lift the voltage. So, I also decided to build a bridge rectifier. I'm not sure if they call it, hold on, let's turn you around. I'm not sure they call it a bridge rectifier if you build it out of actual diodes. But as you see, the three phase windings came in, in the centre. Positive out one end, negative out the other. And I tried that. It couldn't. High wind, this is what, a 36 watt LED lamp. It couldn't even run that at full power. It would just bog the uh, turbine down until it lost speed. It made you think it wasn't getting enough wind, but the day, I, the day I actually tried it on that, it wasn't making a lot of wind. We didn't have a lot of wind, I should say. But yeah, it's disappointing. I thought I thought it'd be better. So I'm wondering if things like an Easter breeze will be any better. But to be honest, it's kind of put me off wind, wind energy for now. So the other thing we need to update on is the batteries, because the batteries and inverter setup. I've changed quite a bit because down here, that's all the fuel. Unfortunately, it's my old 2000 watt inverter. It's a, what was brand was it? Let's try to lose all them. Sun Power 2000 watt. Mm, it did what it said in the tin, it was a good inverter. The trouble is, I was using an Arduino to do the power change over from mains to ground, mains to mains to solar or battery bank you could call it and unfortunately I might have knocked some of the cables one day let's go around here, I might have knocked the cables which caused the well basically the Arduino runs off a voltage controller which tells it when the voltage is high or low enough and when to switch the output on and off which then would tell the Arduino to switch one of two relays on and off. So it would either be mains power or battery bank. By knocking the wire off, it decided to turn the mains and the, and the inverter on at the same time. And yeah, the poor thing spit flames out. So it wasn't very happy. So we go around the corner and have a look at the batteries. Here we go. Here we are in the slightly messy power corner. So up here is the the charge control off the solar panels it's a one of these power mister ones i can rate this thing pretty well i'm pretty pretty happy with it this is the uh it's a 40 amp model I don't think it's got a sticker on it but it'll do 40 amps here's the little um adjustable changeover module which used to do the inverter switch over it's currently not being used i do it manually so if we go in here It'd switch on the output at 27 volts and switch off the output at 22.2 this has never actually been used on the 24 volt I just set it up and never got around to it that says yeah on high that's the current voltage the power mister is giving us 84 watts at the moment which isn't a lot let's go the right way it's only putting 3.8 amps into the batteries and the battery is at 21.8 which is agreeing with that and for where that is four I think it's in protect I don't know I'll have to read the manual I think I need to actually reset the power to this because I just did some of the settings on it I think it's supposed to recycle the power to it so I'll do that at some point today so down here my well, here I should say is the new 24 volt inverter being attacked by the trees. This one's a 4000 watt pure sine wave. The power from the uh, charge controller comes in with these two wires and jumps onto the main two conductors which head down to the battery bank. This is currently oh, outputting, well battery voltage is 21.7, it's doing 200, only 205 volts. It's running a bit low for some reason. The odd thing about this is I've never actually heard the fans come on yet, so I'm kind of worried about it. But never mind, we'll see how we go. 
down here is the new battery bank setup. So there's a big stack of these SBS uh, B14Fs, which are 62 amp hours a piece at 12 volts. So those are 12 volt cells, there is eight of them. So they'll be running four in uh, series, four in parallel, and then the two banks are nailed together with this red wire which jumps the two packs so yeah there's what's that 280 290 amp hours of storage at 24 volts they've been doing pretty well so the way this links into my house where i'm staying is this gray cable which i still haven't nailed to anything goes off inside and i'll show you where we go the gray cable into the dirty corner where the bin lives where it passes through this energy meter if I get a zoom in we're currently consuming 1540 watts the inverters produce nearly 16 kilowatts it's currently running at 4 amps so it's just dropped down yeah it's been doing quite well it's actually saying we've got 230 volts now it must be because when the draw was up it wasn't accounting for it the way this system is working is using a automatic transfer switch which is wired into the fuse board so the fuse board and get the door out of the way is split into two sides so on this side we've also got the main power feed in and we've got the shower cooker and oven on this side and then a separate feed is then drawn out of here into the top of the second RCD which is running things like sockets heaters and lights you see oh, the heaters are off because I don't use electric heaters because they're very expensive so rather than that main feed there this is only ever going to draw a, a low amount of power despite these two which I'm never going to use this is actually being fed from the output of the transfer switch so the idea is as whenever this inverter is switched on it's going into the what would usually be called the main power supply on this side so the inverter power is this side and the backup power is actually the mains so whenever the inverter is on it automatically switches over to the inverter and because it's got a mechanical interlock it means that I can't actually accidentally turn both on at once I mean Big Clive's done a video on these it was a very good bit of kit so that's why I went for it, it's very cheap as well so this when this comes on only feeds this bank which actually just feeds the lights and the sockets which is running things like the computer so over here on the actual incoming meter I've only got 11 quid left on it but as you see the lights on which means it's drawing no power at all so that's very good so what we could do is do a changeover quickly let me just uh, pause the washing machine so we can do this by pausing the washing machine right pause so now I'm going to turn the inverter off and watch what happens and there we are that's now back on the mains in a minute the light will start blinking but I only use some of my solar power back up so I'm going to turn the inverter back on and there we go now we're back and we can continue there there we go so that's how this is currently working it's uh well being september almost well end of september we're not getting as much power as we want but it is what it is come outside now literally if you just i've just been indoors to film that and look at the wind we've got now just as i cut down the turbine this is the first wind we've had in a few days trees are starting to get moving what's price so yeah I did actually say this is going to be off-grid update so I'm not really off-grid but off-grid as much as possible when it comes to energy obviously I use the shower and everything comes off the mains anything to save a bit of power it's more fun for me so the other thing that I don't have I'm just sure the heaters are switched off how do I stay warm so I've also fitted in this property temporarily if I climb back over the hill down this end is the heat pump so I'm going to flip around there it is so not only do I get lovely hot air during the winter from this this unit's falling over yes 
yeah, it's really well installed because obviously this isn't my house but yeah it's just an electric unit what does it use 700 750 watt cooling and heating and that very very oddly runs with these copper hoses this is a uh, propane system so it's, if i have a leak it's not the end of the world it's just gas runs up through the window into the back of the unit there's nets here to stop birds and creatures trying to get in my window and the drain hose just sits somewhere right there just chucks its water out there but that's not all because we're in the UK as soon as we get down it's actually starting to rain because it gets down pretty damn cold and this obviously isn't a very dry area here I'm right by the lake Unfortunately, we need to have a secondary heating system. So up here is one of those Webasto diesel heaters. Now, some people look at this and think, my God, that's dangerous. But no, it worked fine. I only run it when I'm here. I pay a lot of attention. Here's the little diesel pump. And that's the exhaust. So that just blows out there. The air intakes up here. And that is supposedly eight kilowatts. It depends how much you actually believe that because apparently there's no difference between a five and an eight i suspect it's five five kilowatts in a tiny little house like mine is plenty of power plenty of heat even and that my hands getting the wrong this runs off that little canister there so i've got a bit of diesel in the moment when we come into the winter we use it a bit more obviously i'll keep diesel in that can some more diesel over there so yeah i've always got a bit of diesel out and yeah it's starting to try and rain so i'll just show you the indoor setup for the wabasto and the um blah, blah, air conditioner right, i've consistently called it a wabasto it's actually a chinese one chinese diesel heater there's the heat outlet it takes its air in there blows all its intake and exhaust is from outside Yes, it's cardboard, and yes, I am going to change that for insulation board this year, just to keep a bit more warmth in. And yeah, it just runs off uh, on these little controllers. The power supply is currently missing because I use the same power supply that I use for the uh, 3D printer. And on the other hand, we just got the indoor unit of the AC, which is all done via remote control. So away she goes. That's set to 21 cooling. It's not really that warm today or cold, so I don't need it. And that's that. That, in essence, is oh yeah, really zoomed in. And that is basically the whole setup as it stands. And I've just got indoors. I just have this small uh, screen just to tell me what's going on. It tells me the voltage of the batteries, the amps. Doesn't matter because there's no um, shunt resistor connected. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. That is today's solar update and I'm now going to try and return a broken wind turbine. This is a state where to try and get rid of that wind turbine. If I can't, then I'm just going to, um, I don't know, maybe take it apart so it may get any better. Thanks for watching.